Welcome to another episode of the Bandwagon Podcast. And today is one of the first of our new transatlantic relationship with uh, with Vancouver and especially with, with Red FM as well. So today it, it only had to start in one place. Somebody I've been trying to get on for quite a while now. I managed to pin him down when, when I just come back from Vancouver. He is one of the best uh, UK exports to have gone over to uh, to that side of the of the world. He's a musician. He's a producer. He's a an artist. Um, I can't say much more than that. Uh, welcome, Nick Chalia. <laughs> thank you very much. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man. Well, this thank is you. a weird experience, isn't it? Because it's normally the other way around, where you're kind of interviewing people as well. Now it's your turn. Totally, totally. I know it's uh, it's it's weird, uh, and even when even when we were learning all this up and everything, um, I was even then kind of day- thinking about it myself. I was it's usually the other way around, man. Are you going to get any kind of thing right? So, <laughs> but it, but it is it is quite rare, though, Nick, because like when you uh, you know when I was trying to do some research on you and what's around online, there's not that much info. But everyone knows about you, but there's not kind of, and I think this is consistent with a lot of people. That the, the, some of their stories and their kind of traveling history is not anywhere to be uh, uh, to be found. Um, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I've always been one of those kind of guys that's always in the background kind of thing. Um, I've, I've never been in the forefront, um, so I've always been that way. I mean, a lot of the a lot of my friends that you know that you've already interviewed to these guys, as you can tell, all these guys are always in the background. Nobody was in front of of, of, of the camera kind of thing. It's just the way. Uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. I think. I guess. <laughs> I kind of, th- I kind of say they they're more kind of king makers than kings, and they hang around in the background and being seeing it, seeing all the cycles of change and music. Yeah, stuff. I, I would say so. I mean, yeah, for sure, definitely. When I was like uh, a Brutus Jack Paz, a very good friend of mine, uh, one of my inspirations and stuff, and uh, I was listening to his podcast. And same with him as well. We've always been in the background. We've always made people, given people a line like that. And I think that's you know, it, it's it's been. Uh, it's 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 been a blessing in disguise for us, kind of thing, for what we've been doing for so long. Do you think the times? I, I was actually sitting back today. And I was thinking about it. That this is quite controversial, Nick, and I'll I'll get into. I'm just want to get your opinion at this point to kind of set it up for later. But I don't think there's any real artists out there anymore. I think what what you've got now is a uh, content creators, all YouTubers, all kind of social media. I think very rarely are you getting a singer anymore or a musician. No, I, th- I think I think there's still I think there's still talent out there. Uh, I mean, there's, there's there's lots of fresh talent coming, especially from Canada, man. That, especially where I'm from now, um, there's a massive, massive buzz of of so many new kids that are just coming up and just and just killing it. Mm-hmm. Um, the whole AP's killed it. He was <laughs> Victoria, which is an island away, uh, one of the biggest superstars. AP, he was like he's from BC. Uh, we've got some new kids that are really doing well out on this side of the world. So I think there's, there's a lot of new music. There, 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 are, there are a lot of new artists coming out. And I think um, whether whether they train or whether they get to that level, kind of thing, whether they what they get and how they maintain it is the next thing. But they, I think there's 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 a lot of talent out there, uh, a lot of potential artists out there for sure. I can't just set you up with that question to warm you up then. So I knew uh, <laughs> yeah, because we already discussed that. <laughs> Nick, I want I want to I want to go back and go back to your kind of journey within the UK. So like your uh, your dad had a clothing company um and wanted to get you into kind of the family business at that point. What made you go away from that and go into into music? Oh man, I mean the, the first Recollection of me of, of doing any any kind. Of, excuse me, one second. It's my dog. Oh, <laughs> this, 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 is, this is Ali, by the way. Say hi to Ali. He always likes to be in the middle of conversations and stuff. And it was at the beginning. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but one of my first things I, I, I recall was um, I was born in Hansworth, right? Uh, one of my first uh, things was that in, in school, there's a school called Walford School, Walford yeah. Primary School behind Soho or Godwell, kind of thing. So I, I grew up going there. And one of the things that we had was we in the morning, the morning assemblies, there'd be somebody playing music in the corner. And those days, almost every morning was an assembly, but there'd be a prayer and this and that. Yeah. So I used to be one of those DJs in that corner. And, and it's, so I had my first you know, thing of getting into, into getting into music and stuff. My dad was um, you know, in the, in the clothing business, right? All the ladies working and stuff. And there's constantly music playing in the background. 
Horns that you can't say music being played in the background, and, and that's where I think the music kind of thing came from. Um, and then I did have <laughs> actually a whole bunch of that. The, the other one was, um, you know, being being a kid when when the Sufri Party came to England, yeah, back in the eighties, I would guess, or whatever, seventies, I would say, seventies, I would say. One of the first jobs I think he had was working for my dad uh, yeah. in in the clothing business. So it's so, always so grown up with singers and musicians. Um, I don't know the bar that's basically growing up, up and up by Jen, uh, the pubs and stuff. Um, there used to be these, the, 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 the pub nights, well, men's used, men used to go for pub nights and there be music playing every so often and this and that. So basically, until just from there, just from there, you kind of got on with it. And then one thing led to another, and you know, sitting at home. Uh, I actually started playing though. Believe it or not, uh, I actually started playing keyboards late. Um, I actually first was getting like um, a drum machine and stuff like that, and, and getting my dad's vinyls and playing drums on those and stuff. Um, I don't know the only Bajal Helia, and then that was it. So, did you have like, then, did you have like a um, did you have like a teacher, uh, or like any Ustad or anything for? Was was not, keyboard, not, you kind of nominated to be a keyboard player in a band and you didn't really have a choice. Is that right? <laughs> That's exactly what happened, yeah. And I'll tell you what happened. Um, uh, Bruta Jackpal and Bally Jackpal. Uh, I'm sorry, we, went to, we were at the same school. Uh, ba uh, Bally was in my year. Bruta was a year ahead of me. And another cousin, so like Jake Jackpal, uh, up and up at Jensen. Um, so what happened was, one of, the, we were, one of the morning, again, all these school morning assemblies, these guys are performing. They had a school band, right? And uh, I can't remember what it was. I think Milab Junior or something or something like that. Yeah. yeah so, we, so basically, from, we saw them, and then from there, from there, the group of, of our lads was basically like, okay, you're playing keyboards, you're playing Tolki, you're doing this and this and this, and then that was it, <laughs> basically. Uh, and then that's the school band stuff. And then yeah, from there, watch Bruto quite inspired me quite a bit, uh, and then. Never did anything professional from there. Every so often pulled it out, started remixing my dad's vinyls again, uh, kind of thing. And then that was it. It was it was never, never, never a thing of being a going into being a professional, having this career. It was always dad got the business, uh, you know, I'm the oldest son, I'll be taking over. Um, it, and then the yeah, from there, it's just uh, you know, uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a blessed journey. Simple as that, man. <laughs> I got picked up by the Lord Singh Balada, uh, um, who introduced, um, as you know, we introduced the, the artist uh, back in the day. Um, got me in touch with Pip and Jay, who I'm still very, very closely with Compromise. Um, and then, yeah, so basically, it was just a crazy, crazy career, man. Nick, do you recognize this? Do you recognize this picture? Oh, <clears throat> that was. That's Bali and Buta in there and Jack Jagpal. I could barely see. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. There's Jet. Yeah, That's yeah. That's a school band. That's a school band, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it's very difficult for people outside of um, kind of UK to try and understand that within the two, like two square miles of Hansworth was virtually the whole uh, of UK Pongala starting point. The whole hub man, there, there was massive, massive, especially from Hansworth man. Um, as as I was growing up, there was the, the, the likes of uh, uh, you know all, all the Hansworth crew. The, 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 you know you had the Abrasiki to the names now. Yeah, right. As as well as those, I'm talking about my genera generation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. guys were ahead of obviously. They were, they, but my in terms of my generation, we had like Buta uh, or keyboards from a Satarang and stuff. Um, and then we had like all the all the hot Havana Havana boys, the hardcore Havana boys and stuff. So, Top Z was everywhere. So I was I was influenced with a lot of crazy musicians, but yeah, man, there was some there is some crazy talent from from Birmingham Hansworth, man. So when you know when, so you know you're learning, you're messing about, you're getting into kind of some of the kind of back productions or anything. When did you kind of did you try and move into like more mainstream at, at, at a younger age, or when did you get your first opportunity, or was it just TSB when the Lord of Burger was part of Golden Star at, at, at one stage? Was that? I, I, was, I, um, I mean, if I if I recall going back, I think the first. I mean, yes, I played keyboards, but I also played drums as well. 
and drums was a very big passion of mine. And I really, really enjoyed drums. I actually then wanted to be a drummer at one point before the keyboards is that in fact. And uh, and I used to go, I remember, like I said, growing up, going with dad to pubs and this and that, and there'd be singers there, and every so often there'd be somebody with a drum kit, and then I'll, you know, being a little kid, you know, I'll jump on kind of a thing. And I remember um, a few a couple of gigs, it was jazz, jazz down his dad. Because I think he's yeah, he's a singer and he's had a drum kit or something. And I remember being young and jumping on drum kit with those guys back in the day and stuff. So I I never thought of becoming professional into this, but when it happened, it was it was weird. Um, you know, like I said, I was I was just at home playing my own I, I did my own stuff at home, never did anything other than that. Um Pip and Jay, uh Pip Dalio, Jay Sandu, um they needed a, a keyboard player for uh, with uh, the logic body. Suki had just left them. Suki Chand had just left them, and uh, they were like, Nick, okay, we need, we need another keyboard player. We hear you play keyboards, Aja. And basically, I just went in, tried it out, and and, and basically, that was it. <laughs> but then, Pivin Banu has their watch, they laugh at me afterwards. They're like, Nick, the only reason you got into the band was your dad had a big band, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, when we had shows and stuff, they would they'd be like, okay, at least we can use your dad's van to get to shows and stuff. So we should laugh at that. But the thing is, needs that, most that, of it. <laughs> that's where it started from. Um, and then even then, my, my dad was just, you know, Kala. My dad just thought of his chonka. Well, the kids doing it, chonka, they be a phase. And, and, you know, 32, 33, 35 years later, I'm still, still stuck here. I remember uh, seeing one of your rare interviews where. Uh, I'm jumping forward a little bit where your mom used to say to you, Oh, you know, you've done your, you've had your little playtime in Canada, come back now and get a proper job. Were you still getting that were you still getting that pressure at that time as well? I'm getting it now. <laughs> I'm I'm still today getting it now. I, I still do that. My mom's always just like I, my mom, I mean, I've been in Canada now almost 20 years now. Um in, in almost 20 years. And my mom's only been here once to visit. And so up until then, she was just like, okay, Tiga, he's Chonk Burekada, he's doing the radio, uh, she's doing the, you know, he's doing the music and stuff, Chonk Burekada, whatnot. But then when she came in, then she actually saw that, okay, the radio station is a, a, a big setup, um, you know, the band and stuff, and, and, and stuff, you know, everything's, everything's good kind of thing. So then she was like, okay, Tiga, I know where my son is. Uh, but yeah, the, up until a long time, she was saying, you know, Chonk Burekada, I can't know. <laughs> What what was the what what was the some of the key bits that you remember of the bands at that time then? So what year are we talking about then? And like from your memory when you when when you kind of recall some of your um interactions with other bands? I got a bad memory, man. I started um I started wow uh possibly ninety 90- 1990, 91, I think. No, hold on. Yeah, probably back, back, back then. That's wow. where I got into TSB and that's where I kind of started. Um, I forgot the question now. <laughs> no, no, so like, you know, what were some of your key memories of remembering about Sorry, yeah. in being a band? I forgot your question now. I'm bad with memory. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Bad, it's okay. Bad, it's uh, right. Okay, old Asia. Um, it was always a blast. It was, it was one, one of the key things that we, that... I, I found it was brilliant from that those days was the the, the fun rivalry we had um, with, with bands, the banter, I think, the, the challenges we used to have, um, the healthy, friendly competition we used to have and everything. Um, it just seems to be a blast. The, the night times, going to the gigs, going back early in the hours in the morning, uh, the, all, all the standard stuff. Yeah, it was it was a blast. It was it was it was you know living. You know, a, a rock star life kind of a thing. It was weird, you know. Rock, you know, you, you finish work at one job and go straight to a gig, and then back in the morning, you're back in the back in the job kind of thing. Right? So, but it was, it was a, it was, it was a crazy rock star kind of a life. But it was, it was fun. You know, all, all the guys going with everybody. Um, everybody pushed each other in a, in a positive way, and it, it was, it was fun. It was good, good. You know, nineties music was was probably the best era out there, man. Yeah, I mean, because like. Uh... The reason why I wanted to do this is, is for the kind of the comparison in it because you you left to go to Canada just as when the the live scene the live scene was starting to die off with the bands, and so yeah. you so you almost get like a second journey 
in when you see it in Canada because where you can see how it's ramping up now that music scene the the population the community is there and you know the music's going to be around there and dominate for another 20 years at least 100%. like can you see similarities from when you're here now to when you were starting off totally 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 100% man um yeah it, it, i mean even the, the whole idea of me coming to Kansas when, when i did originally plan this all out was to come here and do music full time open up a studio and this and that and and just basically full time into this the radio station was not part of it. radio never came until later on uh, but it was like setting up radio uh, setting up a recording studio uh, with a friend of mine um bring it on the new talent from canada um, what was what was the signs then what was what was the th so two questions why did you want to why did you want to leave the uk and the second one was why did you know 100% that that was the key thing because there was no there was very few acts at that time and the music was a different style let's say there was a lot of remixes and stuff out there you know to take that gamble see the vision of that and also take a brave decision to emigrate what were the key key bits i i think i think a lot of that i'll i'll put on pip daddy well uh pip pip and i grew up together from the Tolo the days uh with golden star and so forth and and, and basically um he got married to somebody here uh, and then uh, and basically then he decided he's in a movie here so when he came here he played all he done weddings and set up a, a dance crew and this that so he was still in the industry and he said he thought to himself well, you know this is this is obviously the future of where things are going and he's the one who got me to come over and visit him see what was happening here there's no studios music kind of they were slowly slowly building it wasn't as hot as it is now uh, but it was getting there uh, but he was, I would say he's on the first visualized that, yeah, Canada's going to be the next place. Then obviously when I came here, it's just the old and, and And I can see exactly that, that there is, there was no music hub here. You know, we had the Sabji Gmans, we had the Hupa Janmans, the, the Jazzy B Budgies and stuff, but they were technically, they were out of here. They were living in India and performing in India back then. Um, so they were hardly, right? there was, there was, Many singers around, but there was no way to go. No musicians. Tell like few musicians, but nothing like the UK thing. It was very unorganized kind of thing. It was very, uh, you know, the low stage to look kind of thing. Whereas UK is a bit more organized and stuff. So basically, I just took that element, applied it here, and and it's kind of and this is know, kind of like kind of pre this is like very early internet, so you can't even share a lot of the music or anything around at that time. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I came to Canada in 2003, um, and here, if I recall, I don't think... They, I mean, like I said, we did have the Kes Malkins and Sabi Jimas and Jazzy Vipajis and stuff like that, but, but they were more... At, at that time, they were more India. They'll come here during the off-seasons and stuff with the families and stuff, but majority of the time, they were at, but there was nothing locally, a few million here and there. Uh, local singers and stuff. I only remember like DJ APS. I used to hear his, his stuff for that. Yeah, he was, he was, he was, he was I think he's he's Toronto based. I, I just class it the same at that point. You know, obviously, I mean, <laughs> we, know, we know the rivalry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> like the, he, he's he's Toronto based. He's Toronto based. Um, um, I've never met him, but yeah, so the so music was it was it was fresh again. It was again. It was yeah. I watched the whole industry grow up here again, and it was really to relive it again. Right. So it's it's you know being. Born twice and reliving life twice. Yeah. So you know, obviously, when you, you've gone through the the life cycle, let's say of the live scene in the in the UK, um, and you, when you're hanging around with other artists and other bands, the, your creativity flows. But if, in 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 Canada, did that did that stifle? Did that stumble? Because you're not surrounded by that whole scene. It's 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 hit or miss. You could be you first come over, you could be isolated. You. You're on your own. There's not that much scene there. How did you kind of keep yourself? It's all right. How do you keep? How did you keep yourself kind of creatively active? Um, I did then sit constantly on YouTube looking for UK videos oh. and Facebook and, and watching live shows and stuff like that. Uh, I I still and I, and I still do. I still miss those. Like anytime there's any kind of concert happening, anything live in UK, um, I'm I'm always on there on people's social media just trying to watch that vibe and stuff. Uh, it was hard. Um, there was a big challenge of when I came here and trying to bring the UK vibe here and trying to introduce that here, whereas 
they were used to a different. It, it was it was a kind of a, you know there was, there was a big in, India influence that was happening here in the two thousand kind of thing. Big artists from India influence over here, and, and 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 me coming here from England, there was that clash trying to get that music over here. Uh, so there was that big thing, and then they, then then there was uh, uh, with local musicians and local singers. There was that little album that get out from outside kind of a thing. Uh, not that it stopped me. I mean, I'm good with everybody still, uh, but there there was that heard at the beginning. But how did you how did you how did you deal with that then? I get on with everybody, man. <laughs> Simple as this. Because oh, yeah. if you if you're like somebody. Uh, you know, I've asked it a few times, especially producers. I like to dig in a little bit more where if you've got a singer and you're producing, that relationship between those two is very is obviously massively important because that's the yeah, chemistry yeah. in order to come out. But if you've got a diff if you're trying to bring a different vibe and the singer's got a different vibe, like how did you deal with that? Especially when you got a class uh, uh, sorry, a clash of culture as well. You're a UK guy and that they might be, you know, a, a Canadian or Indian vibe. Yeah. I think I think for, for, I, mean, I did I didn't work with anybody and everybody. That was the first thing. If I if if I couldn't get my message across, get my vibe across, I think because I was I was at that time where I was yet to find my own sound as well. Uh, I'm I'm trying to find my sound. Living in Canada, being influenced by the UK, and then being in a country where India is Indian Punjabi music is really dominating here from from India kind of thing. So it was, it was it was really hard trying to find my own sound from there, um, and, I, and I would say I only found it till, till later on with the band and stuff. Uh, but gave that it it was hard, and and and, and being I, I, I can I say I, I didn't work with everybody uh, simply because of stuff like that, um, and the people that I did work with were majority of the people that I did work with were new guys um, in the crew of the band. Uh, there's a new kid on the block back then. You know, he's, a guy called Raju Joel, Gagan Sharma, uh, guys that I used to work with, Love and uh, Love and Sanj Signia. Uh, so, so there's a lot of local guys that I work with. Uh, and those are the guys that got me full on the bus and, and got me creatively trying to produce something different because they too were pushing me as well. So I think that way, that was where my production work, I think, were, uh, were different and out there kind of thing. Did you ever get close to going back to the UK because it weren't working out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean, mean you know, happy, what, <laughs> she would have been, you know, um, at the age of thirty years old, born in England. Big, I got a big, massive family, man. Massive, massive family in, in, in the UK, uh, and and to leave a big, close, immediate family, um, and pack your bags and just come over here, kind of thing. Um, leave my kid behind. I had a three-year-old daughter then as well. I had to leave my daughter behind. Um, yeah, it was it was a struggle. Um, it was it was hard. Many times I did, you know, think about coming back home, but uh, just just kept just kept at it, man. I don't know what it was. I think just just yeah, just just jumped forward and just kept going, kept kept chugging along. Um, but it it was a challenge, you know. It's 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 it's. I would say it's a little bit easier maybe for the new kids nowadays, the students and stuff. Um, for them to come over and for them to adapt here and and, and get on with stuff. For me. Uh, being a little bit older, having a massive family kind of thing, coming back to coming to a country on my own uh, and living uh, living alone uh, was was tough kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do for your family, what, right? What was the turning point for you then? What was your big break then? Um, I would say I think I think the radio station was uh, something that kept me driving forward. I think kept my mind of stuff. Um, the radio station kicked off around 2006, um, and then from 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 there, kind of thing, because I was involved with the with the radio station from from the construction days and yeah. applying for the radio station and stuff, so forth and so forth. Um, you know, I, I um, that that kept me kept my mind going, uh, kept me kept me occupied, kept my mind going, and then and then all the bar, then obviously the family came afterwards, uh, but the radio station kept me going. Uh, was that those, was that? Was that an easier, pl you know, it was interesting what you said earlier about, you know, getting your, the UK vibe out. Was that an avenue for you to keep playing the UK vibe and trying to convince everyone, like, get people used to the sound? <laughs> I, I, I tried it. Um, I mean, I, I didn't I didn't go out playing with many bands when I came here. 
Um, I, I, it was the funny thing, I was actually thrown in on the deep end uh, when, I, when I landed here. I was like straight away, um, David Muxus, by, by the way, he had, a, he had a tour in Canada. And uh, he's one of these keyboard players from India, never came. Uh, and he was just like, okay, Nick, you play keyboards? Child. And I was like, well, I've, I've literally just been in, been in Canada um, a couple of months. And I did that and then did this big, massive show with uh, the Shut the Gill by Jews. I, I, I just want to ask you a really... I just, yeah. I just, another deep I just want to ask you a really silly question. It's like, like... How did you pick up the the tracks and everything like that? Like, how did you know what the song was? Were you just you have to listen to the tape constantly, or just play, it or you just oh man, it was freestyling it. I mean, the, the the good thing with the India gigs, there's always there's always one India keyboard player. You know, and it's like I'm smart. Then. So so you basically there. In, in my case, a lot of the cases, I'm there as a backup backup second secondary keyboard player kind of thing. So for me, it was just easy kind of thing. I didn't I didn't do the leads that so much. When it, when I did do leads, it was just a matter of just just jamming it, man. I don't know who Nishat Gil was. I don't know who Debbie Muxus who he was until like you know I was coming to Canada. I grew back in England with with you know the with Malkin Singh and the Apna Singh Heats and and you know the, the H and the Chucky D's kind of thing, <laughs> right? So coming coming over here and who's Nishat Gil? Oh, he's the you know go sana kari ni to pick shavaj wali. I'm like oh. Okay, <laughs> and then he looks well. Like, okay, <laughs> so you would just you would just float along with just playing anything. Yeah, you would just float along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, just gotta flow along, man. You know, I mean, it was it was a different vibe then. Uh, it was a different sound, but you know, I was I was the backbone kind of thing, not not in front. Um, so so it worked. I wasn't there to be in lead, and so it actually worked out kind of thing perfectly. So it, where you where you starting to get so you know like uh, I'm trying to remember like the early days of kind of how when the BBC Asian Network came about on here and then you had a lot of the local radio stations, um, right, right. At the time there was a pirate radio station in like West Brom in the middle of the Opera Radio. Then there was like Radio yeah. Derby with like Polly Tank and was was still yeah, smashing yeah. there. I, I think we've yeah, kind yeah. of lost that radio the the local radio sound within there yet. Yeah, it's still really big within in in Canada and that scene. Like, is how important is it for you to kind of keep that going as long as possible and having other local radio stations going, um, kind of staying alive as well? I mean, it's like like we said. I mean, for me, like I said, coming from England, coming here with that shift is like going through a bit of a time machine. Um, so here, radio is fresh, or you know, was was still fresh when we started off. Um, it was. The only form of news and stuff. I mean, hot the Tatiga, you got internet everywhere, you got YouTube, and you know all the channels available nowadays. But you know, when we started off, radio was your form of communication, uh, which we you know, like obviously BBC and the Asian Network and stuff. Hot the it's become a norm for you guys now. Not many people, I guess, I listen to radio over there. I guess. Eighty, um, that's still radio I, I, is still very popular. I'll tell you what, we've got a problem here. Is one we've got a language issue. Where Punjabi is being spoken less and less, so, and I feel sometimes okay. that connection with the uh, with the music, you know, a lot of kids, uh, even myself, learnt Punjabi through listening to music, um, mm -hmm. and that used to be predominantly on radio. Now, when you listen to kind of radio, it's more talking. The quality of songs are not brilliant, and it's less and less punk. Like, if I'm honest, um, mm -hmm. and I don't really, you know, I don't hear. I don't hear a conversation with my mates or anyone. Oh, did you did you catch this radio show on the weekend? That doesn't. If people want to listen to music, they go straight into kind of YouTube and stream it off. Where yeah, I, yeah. I I felt, I think there's a at least one or two generations for you guys to go through it over there in order to get to that level. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I could I mean, be wrong. Sure. On that. No, I think for sure. I mean, we do have, we, we still do have that older hardcore group that are, are radio listeners. Uh, we do have that workforce. Uh, there's a big, massive workforce that relies on the radio. We have a big workforce, truck drivers, taxi drivers, security, this, construction drivers. You know, I mean, I had my house painted uh, a couple of a couple of years ago, about a year ago, and uh, basically they were listening to Red FM here, and they, and they would say, this is how we listen to radio and stuff. Uh, so I think he, for here, because of the, because of that workforce, radio still is going to be popular for us for a long time. 
Um, so I think for us, we're, we're, we're going, yes, the new generation is on the smartphone. Yes, the new generation is on Spotify and uh, Apple Music and stuff. But uh, I think we still got more time on, on the radio stuff. But on but here, what we do on, on in terms of the radio session now is we're digitally, we're now pushing as much on digital now as well. Uh, for if, if, I, if, I, if I talk about the radio session for a second, yeah. um, you know, our, our radio station, you know, we're lucky we've got some great hosts and stuff and, and, and our radio maintained itself over the three cities. Uh, but now our thing now is we're pushing into digital. We're trying to get into digital more, digital platforms, YouTube videos, but all information content. Uh, content. So that's the way we're going on that side. Um, and then also as well, we're trying to do the community stuff as well, getting involved in more gigs and more live concerts and stuff. So, you know, it's it's it's, it's still good out here for radio. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a couple of things that I've I, I've noticed. A lot of the bigger um, kind of Punjabi artists and stuff, they don't they don't do any of those interviews anymore. You know how before they would crave to go onto the BBC Asia Network. I would say yeah, and, uh, over the last year, like I don't think Audela did an interview there. Daljeet didn't do an interview. Yeah. Uh, AP didn't do one. So it's like you know how before everyone used to be that was the staple one. I think people know that they their own. Um, their own channels are a lot. Brit Asia's changed its model now to the kind of, um, I'm not sure how many of you actually watch the channel, but it's more about TMZ, kind of the Instagram, how that's kind of, that's changed it all. Is that something that yeah, you yeah. guys are, are, are looking at? Because I noticed on your feed, it is a lot more newsy rather than kind of the, the music. Is that a conscious decision? Um. Yeah, I mean, you're going to go with the times and stuff. I mean, it's, it's what people want. We, we've, um, you know, uh, we, we've got a strong social media team at the, the station, and, and the constantly say that they're watching numbers and stuff. So the, we know what people want. You, you've got to be. You can't just say, "Man, I want I said, you know, I said, you know." If, if for, for a business wise, you've got to look at the stats. You've got to look at the numbers. You've got to see what makes sense. Uh, so for a business, it's it's a different principle altogether. Whereas me, I'm for my you know, my personal, I can put up what I want. For a business model, you've got to think smartly. You've got to think differently on that. So your content does have to matter to your to your fan base and to your listeners, and you go with what works for you. Um, and then with our, with our case, we know um, that a lot of our stuff, what we, what you see on our social media is what people want, kind of thing. This is the information they want. It's a lot of community information. Um, and yeah, it works for us. What, you know, we've talked quite a lot of the positives there. So what are some of the challenges that you're facing within it though? With digital, I think, I think the biggest challenge now, I think there's, there's, a, there's a lot of, other influences of of, of of social media that, that that are coming in that I personally don't think that should be there kind of a thing that cover up that you know there, there's there's no limits to social media anybody could do anything and, and get away with it kind of a thing there's no barriers on that so they, that's the limitation of not the limitation that's the the the, the negative side of social media and, and how you work but in terms of how you market yourself and stuff it, there, there, there is a simple business plan to it um apply it and get on with it simple as that it's there for you right <laughs> you, you are, not, well, yeah you know Nick, you, you don't sound like a complicated man it's very like this is what we got to do we got to go for it and that's it, it i well, I've, i think I, I think i've now bought my side my life in, in, in the very simple terms and kept it simple and minimal kind of a thing right um uh, yeah there's just one these things but yeah i think i think it's everything's there jokers can not go jacket is there do it <laughs> what well, how do you um how do you assess the scenes in terms of in the uk how do you what's your view on the uk market to start off with it, it's hard for me to tell i mean one thing i one thing there's there's a big change that we've got to all understand now if, if we talk about the music industry is equity Hundasaga, there was the uk hub england had its own industry india had its own canada had its own Everybody had their own little pockets of, of music kind of thing. Um, and, and before, everybody did their own thing. Let's go who's who kind of thing, kicking it. Now, it, it's one big industry. There's the there's the A-level, there's the world A-levels now. I'll get on this again. In UK, you had marketing and uh, and Hira and this and that, and the A-lifters and so on, so on, so on. And, and then now it's basically, it's one world. It's one thing. It's one industry now. Um, your competition is is now bigger, and and now is getting into that big market now and getting into that big hub is restarting all over again now. 
right? So there's a, there's a big uh, learning curve on that again. Uh, but what what do you uh, think of the what do you think of the risks then in terms of like of not having it in each of them because like you're right that the world's become smaller and everyone can kind of perform in different cities or all around the around the world but I, when you look at the UK market like th- th- there seems to be a little bit of a revival coming in and a lot of the old school kind of re- re- redoing it again. I, I, I'm personally a little bit um, kind of naive to that, where I, I think sometimes now, you know, where people have had their, where people have their, you know, the opportunity, the, the windows getting smaller and smaller, and mm. um, the type of music that they used to release, I think needs to change again now, because the new model and style of music is, is changing, and especially even when, um, you know, just going to do a wedding in, in Vancouver, and you're hearing... The, the the type of music being played very rarely were we hearing a Punjabi instrument uh, you know mm-hmm. it was always it's trap beats it's English music kicking in now um, and I and I think the the all the as 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 the market's turning into one the sounds changing all the same where you had three different sounds now it's it's yeah. all the same I think that's a big risk um it's I mean. Yes, it is, but I think if you again, if you if you're in this industry and, and same with any work, right? I mean, again, that's got we group with the bands of where it was just a, you know hanging out with up and party kind of thing. There's a lot of girls and a couple of members that went to work in the morning after doing a gig and, and this and that had had nine to five. And it's come to a point where now, where if you want to make this a nine to five, you've got to put it in. Uh, and, and again, it's anything's possible. I've seen a lot of local kids here. Um, there are a couple of local kids now that are, that are pretty much blowing up now, big time. Um, so it's possible you got to just understand the business and, and, and go full force with it. You can't see this is like one of the things that Jazzy Beepa just says if you, if you want to dream for it and go for it, put it, put your hard work in for it. And, and it's possible now, right? You get okay, that, you know, I've grown up the time where I had to work at nine to five and do my passion and stuff. But nowadays, if you want to be that. If you want that passion to go, kind of thing, just get on with it, kind of thing. You're younger, and the also the other thing now as well, it, it, it's all the younger kids that are doing it nowadays, anyway. Uh, do you think? Do you think by having? I always think that, um, that by having that job and having that kind of normal kind of life was the was how those artists humble themselves. You know, it, you know, an artist if he's a dick, he's a dick. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. But if you went to work and all that, you'd understand that you know, come Teddy done that, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when you see the amount of money that DJs are making, artists are making now are phenomenal. Like, there's nobody there to kind of check them and say, listen, mate, you ain't shit, really. You know what I mean? <laughs> everyone did how, how do you kind of, I mean, I, I, I'm only, I'm trying to get it out of here because I know, you know, you see this on a regular and you know, you bought, you said it yourself, you've done the rock and roll lifestyle. When you've seen some of these guys and you're like, how close are you telling people to like, Mate, just shut the fuck up, man. I, 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 I can't, man. It's not my nature to do that. I just, I just say, you know, shall I do it? I, I wish I'm, I'm a well wisher, man. Says, well, um, I, I, I can't. Do it. I mean, there's times where somebody says, okay, look, I've, I've done this. What do you think? I mean, what's your true opinion? And then if somebody asks me my true opinion, like I'm a, I'm a Sagittarian, right? You ask my true opinion, you will get my true opinion on that, right? <laughs> uh, but but otherwise, otherwise, like, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be there to stop anybody's, you know, because like I said, they don't kind of press on there, whatever. Right? I let them go. Good luck to keep the low man. I ain't into that. I ain't got no time, for, you know, to waste my energy on, on on something like that. I'd rather just push myself forward and. You know, I get out with it. I, I got no time to pull anybody else down. And just because they're strong, I let them be. <laughs> if, they're doing something, if they're doing something bad, really, really bad, I'll be hard enough. People will tell them that you shit. I'll be hard enough there, hopefully. <laughs> I, I want to kind of get into kind of future and got stargazing, and, and I want to get your opinion on this. So, it, where do you think the market in the in, in Canada is in the next ten years? Oh wow. <laughs> uh, oh well. Um, you've got the pre. You've got the experience of the last twenty. The, 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 the funny, the funny thing was right. Ten years ago, I I, I asked this question: um, Where do I see the market? And I, and I, and I, and I kind of there's a little interview by of me floating around somewhere on the net where I said exactly where the industry is going to be. That Canada's going to be taking lead. Ten years from now, God knows, man. I think we. 
I think we're pushing mainstream. Um, yeah, I think I think within ten years we will be going towards mainstream at least. The, I think the mainstream industries will be changing. If you think about it now, on the hill, especially in Canada now, uh, a lot of the big concerts that are happening in Canada now are by a company called Live Nation. And Live Nation are the company that do big gora gigs. They've been you know, all the all the Drakes and all the big high end concerts. Kind of thing. Live Nation is a company that put them. now this company picked up Zajit, did the whole Canada US tour by them. Um, hence leading the the, the, the gone to uh, Coachella and so on and so on. Uh, A.B. Dillon was picked up by Live Nation. Um, Raf Safira from UK, um, he's doing a tour with Live Nation. So I think mainstream are picking up in a big way, man. So mainstream knows that there's an that there's money to be made in the Punjabi industry, right? Like John, Bollywood, Bollywood, and Madras, right? Is that going anywhere here? Right? Now, now the mainstream is there. I think. I mean, now you can see you've got all the stuff that's happening. All, all the stuff that's happening. We see the Muslim all passing away. How, how Punjabi music has come to the main front, main front now. I can see that leading the way now. So I, I definitely see Punjabi being up there mainstream. So be and it. other languages and other other yeah. music scene. I'd say being a, a Punjabi producer is the best time ever now because then you can you got that crossover. I think it's hard, like numbers wise, to do it anywhere else is a bit. Uh, is yeah, a bit I mean, there's, 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 there's a lot of new fresh talent out there. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of young kids out there making beats and stuff. So that I mean, that's the way forward. Now. And I don't see that being the, the way stuff for for long term going forward is, is somebody just sitting at home making beats and and, and going from there kind of thing. To down, uh, if you look at hip hop kind of thing. Um, a lot of the a lot of the beats people buy from producers kind of thing. I I, I, I now see Punjabi artists do that now, going and buying beats from from mainstream artists and stuff like them, and and putting their vocals on top and, and being a mainstream track. So I see, yeah, I see, I see Punjabi music definitely being bigger and being a, more of a norm. Jay Z just signed <laughs> Munir the Bhatt a couple yeah, of yeah. weeks ago. I look, I look, weeks, I look, I look, I look, I look how big that is. Beyonce performed, uh, she had Nag playing, Jazzy's Nag playing at a, at a warm-up or something. I mean, think about that. I mean, yeah, they know, they, they know Punjabi music is big and they know there's money to be made. I have to do my, uh, my uh, Costa Rica Jazzy B story. But, like, if, even in Canada, like, how, he's, how he still dominates the market everywhere is incredible. It's, it's unbelievable. It's, 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 it's crazy. J- Jazzy B Faji is, is a true, true rock star, man. And I've seen him... I, I, the first time I saw him, I came on tour with TSB in 95, 96 here to Canada to do a show. And that show was crazy as well. There was a, uh, uh, Khalid Manak was performing, uh, Muhammad Sadiq, Rajit Kaur, uh, the Durga Rangila, Hans Raj, Hans, uh, Manmohan Waris had just started off and Sangtar was playing keyboards with him. Um, so I was, I was at this Big. I was at this this massive massive gig back in back in the nineties. Like, like, like I said, a little nineteen twenty year old kid thrown in with superstars like that. So like I said, it was it was, it was a blessing. Um, but being on that tour was the first time I saw Jazzy B. Baji. Um, he walked into one of the promoters' houses, and everybody was just like, "Who the hell is this kind of guy with his hair kind of all standing up kind of thing?" Um, he came to see Kaldi Manik. Uh, so and, and and from there he left, kind of and from there I was like, oh, that guy's gonna be be something. Uh, but you know, thirty years later with him and staying, hanging out with him, kind of thing, going on stage with him, such a humble guy, such a brilliant inspiration, such a such a role model. I mean, I was done. I was COVID about. I was after COVID, kind of thing, I was like, okay, fine, I'm done. What do you mean, I like much- done like with music? the whole music? Yeah, yeah, the music, there, there's, there's no live gigs happening. God knows if there was going to be a live gig ever happening again. God knows what was going on. And, you know, um, and it just came to the point where you're going to practice when you get these gigs, right? So you, <laughs> so so you were, like, so you were, like, you're still going to carry on the radio, right? But, like, the music yeah, yeah. side of it was, like, you, you, you made that deal with yourself that this was it. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much. I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. Right. Um, the, the, there was, like I said, there's nothing happening in COVID for like three years, kind of a thing. And then Jazzy B, Jazzy Party phoned me one day, I'm like, oh shit, he wants to, he needs my help, he needs to keep up. I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, Paji, I'm sorry, man, I'm, I'm retired, man, I'm not doing it. And Paji's like, he goes, he goes, what else are you gonna freaking do? He goes, you got three weeks, then I freaking set you on stage. 
we made a, we made a song with him, Nina Tsunami with him. Uh, um, and, and 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 that first album was just crazy. Um, and, and we just got crazy busy. We just got too busy that we couldn't even follow it up. Uh, and, and social media was just new those days. Yeah. So we were we were too busy making the music as opposed to promoting the music. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we just kind of like all the way to people. Oh man, we 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 we, had, we we did some crazy shows, man. Crazy, so crazy any plans shows. to uh, kind of re re-energize it again, or is it kind of? Oh no, no, hundred percent. Well, we're back. Um, we're in comments. We 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 got uh, new albums, new we got new music ready. We got videos ready. Um, as I said, we just did the sitcom um, recently, and that's doing well on the side. And they they pushing that sitcom to Netflix. So hopefully. At the moment, it's just Canadian uh, sitcom at the moment, um, but they, they, their plan is to push that onto Netflix. And I think they're getting a good uh, viewership on that to, to hopefully go that way. Um, and, and see, hopefully, where season two and so on that goes with. Uh, but in terms of Encarma, yeah, we've got new new music that we're working on. Um, we've just shot three videos a month ago. We've got lots of stuff, lots of music coming what, up. What, what's Canada coming? Day, we... Go on. Sorry. Yeah, as, as I say, you know, the, the whole of the whole of July kind of thing, we're pretty much out every weekend, booked every 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 weekend with the band, and that's good for us kind of thing. And you know, being being a band, the last thing we want is we all, we all have nine to fives, all of us individually kind of thing. So the, we can't afford to go out every weekend. You know, for us, once or twice a month, perfect time pass. We you know we get the fun out of it, and, and it's good. Uh, but but you know, July 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 touch wood is, is is a busy one for us. And what does the next sort of uh, 12 months look like for you individually? Individually, I mean, um, as as well as um, the, the radio show and the radio station, we've got their own plans, their own production stuff as well, uh, projects and stuff. I've got my own little projects that I'm working with the station on digital um, that we're working on, um, bringing the show back um, full force again, the radio show, I'll try and bring that back as well. Um, but... You know, for us individually, we've got the band is doing well. I've got other vocals that are still holding on to, um, and I finally got the clearance to use them. Um, so there's this 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 interesting stuff that's happening. Um, I I got some, I had some vocals that I had held on for uh, for a long time of You Be Monarch and Kalid Monarch, um, brand new songs that I've held on to. Yeah. Um, but they were recorded just before they just before Mark Self passed away. Okay. Um, our, our, our plans was um, that we recorded the songs kind of thing when he was here, and our, our plan was a year later he comes back for this festival for a Mela here in Canada, and we would decide okay, so I'll while that we'll have the song ready, and we get a video. But you know, God forbid, in between he passed away, um, and then the other got ill, um, and then these these songs have just been sitting on my hard drive for years, kind of thing. And I was like, okay, well. The biggest thing, firstly, for me was like, okay, Jay, my father, they look again, I'm fed, I'm right? Yeah. So I had that thing back in my head as well that I don't want to be taking advantage of this and this. So yeah. it's back in my head all along. And then I finally spoke with Jazzy Baji a couple of times. I'm like, Baji, look, I need your blessings on this. And, you know, I want, let's, I want to get this going. And, he, and now Baji's like, okay, do what you want to do, get it ready, play it to me. And uh, we'll go from there. So. Fingers oh. crossed how that works out, but but the, but the, but the you know the, the band stuff is is big big and promising for us as well, so, and yeah. And then um, I've obviously told you you're doing your podcast as well soon. Is that right? Uh, yeah. There's there's a lot of little plans and stuff, and it's a matter of me just getting off my ass and just doing it. But yeah, the 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 the, the radio show. Um, I want to turn that into a podcast, so it's more of a radio show and a podcast at the same time. Um, I've got the slot and everything sorted out. Um, so it's a matter of just sitting there and lining up guests and getting all that going. So get ready for that. Then we'll be on that side as well. This is what this relationship's about. It's about the first transatlantic kind of podcast relationship yeah, where man. you know it was it was good and and I really appreciated it as well because like when we had um, when we met and we were having that conversation and you and you were saying like how you saw this and then and I'm like I'm like forget that I want to talk to you. You know what I mean? And it was like. It was crazy, man. Well, you mean your 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 show has been one of my connections to UK. Yeah, uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and and you know when I, and when I when I saw it, it's like you know I, I watched the Shin one, the Simon or Leeds. I watched a lot of them. 
Buta, Jack Butas and Zeus and this and that. So I've seen all of them. And it's like, wow, well, that was my connect to those guys. Mm. I've grown up with those guys. Simon, uh, my, Simon was auto player with after Maniac. Buta inspired me to play live keyboards. Buta also was one of the first guys who gave me uh, production work. Um, you know, um, he got me, I, I did a couple of tracks for B21 uh, on, on, on their first album. Um, and then Buta got me on a couple of tracks with um, Sadara Gale and Pure Magic. Wow. Uh, um, Rose, Rose, uh, that song that's still played at the end of every Everyone, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, every, every, every party, yeah, I was, you know, I was heavily involved in, the, in that track and everything. Um, but yeah, it's it's, it's been a, it's been a fun ride, fun ride. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a blessing in disguise, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's been blessed. So, as you know, if you've been listening to this quite a lot, they, we come up to the bandwagon section where I kind of say, is there a bandwagon you can jump on, jump off, or is there anything that you want to get off your chest? This is your space to do, Sony. No. Remember, you're a Sagittarius. <laughs> no. You're a Sagittarius, so if you, want to, if you want to say it, you can say it. No, no, no. What I want to say to everybody, you know, first I want to say thank you to you. Uh, and just a massive shout out, respect to every musician, every artist out there. Uh, hustling, doing this stuff. Um, I'm still watching you guys. I still watch all the videos and stuff. And, and I think it's, I'm still in touch with a lot of the musicians from UK. And the, the fortunate thing for me now is being in Canada. I've been in touch with a lot of India, India keyboard players and musicians and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of musicians coming in. So all the musicians out there, uh, all, the, all, all, all the guys that I know uh, that inspired me and stuff, you know, rock on, man, you know, keep, keep doing what we've been doing. And uh, Ricky, thank you, thank you as well, man. <laughs> no, we're definitely well. We're meeting up soon again, hopefully. So, uh, Nick, I really, I really, I really, I really appreciate this. And I'm gonna hold you to account when the episode and all that stuff's coming. You're coming back on to promote it, and you're gonna show it, and then we'll we'll, we'll give it the pump that it is. Hundred percent, man. I appreciate it, man. Really, really appreciate what you do, man. It's really nice seeing you guys uh, on on the weekend as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I keep, 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 keep rocking it as well, man. You, you're doing a great job as well. Keep doing oh, it's all right. All right, bro. Respect. Thank you. Thank you. Peace out, man. <laughs>